in this video i am going to discuss barrett esophagus it's a important topic from mcq point of view let's start barrett esophagus what is barrett esophagus first we have to understand what is barrett esophagus for that you must know the normal lining the mucosal lining the epithelial lining of the esophagus and the stomach can you see the first diagram in the first diagram you can see the normal lining of the esophagus is squamous we know that the normal lining of the esophagus is squamous and what is the normal lining of the stomach the normal lining of the stomach the epithelial lining it's columnar so can you see with red color i have shown the squamous and with blue color i have shown the columnar and this is normal normally the esophagus is squamous and the stomach is the columnar so at the junction of esophagus and stomach there is squamous columnar junction it is known as sc junction or gastroesophageal junction squamous columnar junction is there right so why there are two different epithelia in the two adjacent organs have you ever thought it why it is there because the stomach have hcl hydrochloric acid is present in the stomach hcl is not present in the uh, esophagus so the columnar epithelia of the stomach can bear the stress given by the acid but squamous cannot bear it so okay the acid is present in the stomach but not in the esophagus so everything was good but there are some individuals in which this acid reflux it is known as gerd there is a disease known as gerd the full form of gerd is gastroesophageal reflux disease so in them the hcl is refluxing upwards refluxing upwards and causing the hindrance causing the collision with the lower esophagus so this portion of the esophagus is exposed to acid again and again now it is causing stress on the wall of the esophagus normally the esophagus cannot bear now it is lined by the squamous now so squamous lining cannot bear the acid so in this lower esophagus you can see the squamous is replaced by columnar the squamous normally it was squamous the complete esophagus was squamous so this portion was also squamous but now in this portion you can see the red lining is replaced by blue lining so squamous is replaced by columnar right so this portion of the esophagus in which the squamous is replaced by columnar it is metaplasia what is metaplasia it is one of the type of adaptation in pathology we see five type of adaptations hypertrophy hyperplasia atrophy metaplasia and dysplasia so metaplasia is one of the adaptation in which one type of mature epithelia is transformed or replaced by another type of mature or adult epithelia so here in lower esophagus normally it was squamous but now it is replaced by columnar so can i say it is an example of column columnar metaplasia yes it is an example of columnar metaplasia and this portion of the esophagus is known as barrett esophagus this portion this portion of the esophagus is known as barrett esophagus uh, it doesn't produce any symptoms much but it is pre malignant it is pre malignant so here after metaplasia dysplasia can occur and dysplasia can lead to malignancy so that is barrett esophagus you got it now what is the definition can you define it now i guess you can define it now so this is a condition in which due to reflux that is gerd due to reflux the stratified squamous epithelia of the lower esophagus it is replaced by columnar epithelia so basically in the lower esophagus squamous get converted to columnar and this is known as columnar metaplasia so this is the definition of the barrett can you see the two diagrams initially the lower esophagus was having stratified squamous epithelia right but now it is replaced by columnar epithelia so this is columnar metaplasia and it is known as barrett so same thing is written due to repeated reflux shift so where is the gastroesophageal junction now where is the squamous columnar junction initially the squamous columnar junction was here right at the junction of squamous and columnar but now the squamous columnar junction is here because this portion of esophagus is like stomach only so can i say squamous columnar junction shifted upwards yes it's an important mcq the squamous columnar junction is shifted upwards oh so we can say the shifting of the squamous columnar or esophageal gastric junction upwards right so that is the thing and it is an example of metaplasia you can see the same here coming on malignancy the incidence of malignancy as i have told you it is a pre malignant uh, condition 
so in the barrett esophagus in future if it is not treated corrected in future it can convert into adenocarcinoma of the esophagus in the esophagus we are having two types of cancer the squamous and the adeno so here in barrett esophagus it increases the risk of adeno not squamous right so surveillance biopsies are required every 6 month or annually we do the biopsy of the portion of the Barrett esophagus and look for dysplasia. Whether dysplasia is taking place, yes or no. If dysplasia, high grade dysplasia is already there, we advise to get resected. Otherwise, it will get converted into malignancy. Right? It is an important risk factor for the adenocarcinoma. Never forget that. So, Barrett esophagus is a pre mal pre malignant condition. Right? It's a pre malignant condition. So, you can learn the sequence. Initially, the normal esophagus is there. which is stratified squamous epithelium right then it converted into columnar from stratified squamous it converted to columnar so it is no more normal now it is known as barrett esophagus so it converted to columnar you can see the stratified converted to columnar it is known as barrett now after metaplasia there is dysplasia so you can see here dysplasia already started right after dysplasia it's full thickness dysplasia that is carcinoma in c2 and after that the basement membrane is breached and the tumor cells are coming in the stroma that is carcinoma so first normal then metaplasia then dysplasia then carcinoma in c2 and finally carcinoma so it is step by step it is not one day one day change it takes many months or years or long duration to to do so coming on grossly so this portion of the esophagus can you see this lower portion of the esophagus normally squamous epithelia is white in color can you see the squamous epithelia normally it's white in color white but the columnar epithelia is red in color right so this portion initially it was white and now it converted to red it is the continuation of the stomach we cannot differentiate the stomach and the esophagus here right here the we can differentiate this one is stomach and this one is esophagus we can make it out but here we cannot make it out so the grossly the, that portion of the esophagus become red and velvety right we can appreciate the red and velvety color here coming on microscopically replacement of the squamous with the columnar that's it treatment what you will give for treatment basically it is occurring with gerd it is occurring with gerd so stop the reflux stop the reflux for that give ppi that is proton pump inhibitors give laser photodynamic therapy give ergon beam plasma coagulation therapy you can do endoscopic mucosal resection and if the dysplasia is already set you can do esophagectomy that's it so that's all about barrett esophagus it's a small topic yet very important for competitive exams thank you